Hi everyone, John up here again to give a glimpse into the life of the Slater crew through their deck log. This week was not as busy as the previous one due to a large accident in one of the engine rooms causing the ship to dock for repairs. With daybreak on the 15th, Slater was still moored portside to the Clyde Mallory dock in Tampa, Florida. On her starboard side was the Admiral Class Minesweeper, the USS Barrier, AM-150. Morning Muster brought the same news of Folds and Terrell being absent. Otherwise, this day looks to have been a slow one for the Slater crew. The boys did expend just over 1,200 gallons of fuel and 3,500 gallons of fresh water. After Morning Muster the next day, Barrier got underway, and shortly after, Lieutenant Commander P.H. Wall of the United States Coast Guard came aboard Slater to act as pilot. After the magazines were inspected, special sea details were set, and at 11.45, Slater departed the Clyde Mallory dock and proceeded down the Seddon Channel. With all engines a head full, a man overboard drill was conducted at 14.59. Within five minutes, the crew had successfully rescued the life ring. For the next hour, the K-guns were tested, as were the 20mm Orlikins. Gun number five jammed on the 16th round due to an error in loading the magazine. Lieutenant Healy served a copy of the summary court-martial to Seaman 2nd Class Chapman. Slater returned to the Texas fuel dock in Tampa, Florida later that evening, where she received just under 8,000 gallons of fuel. At morning muster on the 17th, Folds and Terrell were declared stragglers, and the ship returned to the Clyde Mallory dock. At 12.50, the general alarm was sounded. A fire was discovered in one of the engine rooms. Two minutes later, Fire Chief Goodell came aboard, and the Coast Guard fireboat came along Slater's port side. Charles E. Lavin, motor machinist mate, third class, and Willard L. Worley, fire controlman, first class, were removed from the ship via stretchers. Chief motor machinist mate, Lowell Sheeman, and others assisted with the evacuation of the wounded sailors. As the proper authorities came aboard to investigate, J.C. Herman, electrician's mate, second class, gave a preliminary count of what happened. Just before the fire broke out, Herman was on the ship's service switchboard. As the service generator came up to speed, the direct current was being put in. It started to act up, and suddenly, flames were pouring out from around the rocker arm covers. Salen E. Russell, motor machinist mate second class, Lavin and Worley, tried to stop the engines, but were hampered by the flames. This is presumably when Lavin and Worley were injured. Smoke quickly filled the compartments, and they were forced to evacuate. The flames were eventually extinguished. Levin sustained moderate burns to his face, hands, and forearm. Worley sustained severe burns to his face, hands, and forearms, and was listed in serious condition. Later that day, after the injured and various authorities left the ship, Clinton Folds, seaman second class, who had been missing for two weeks, returned aboard under guard from the receiving station at Tampa. He had been AOL since 0700 on the 5th of May. At 1601, Slater got underway to Tampa Shipbuilding Company under the tow of the tugs Eva and Tasco. The next day, Slater was still moored to the port side of hull number 101, which was starboard side to hull number 100, which it was moored to the Tampa Shipbuilding Company's dock. The number one service generator was in use due to the number two service generator having a fire the previous day. At morning muster, ship's orders three and four were read to the crew, and at 0945, the investigation board for the engine room fire came aboard. At 1344, Charles F. Copeland Jr., seaman second class, was escorted under guard off the ship by coxswain A.C. Elkins. 
who delivered Copeland to the receiving station at Tampa. He would later be transferred to the Naval Receiving Station at Miami, and all of his records and transfer papers were also delivered. On the 19th, ship's power was shifted from the number one service generator to shore power from the Tampa Bay Shipbuilding Company, and the remainder of the day was quiet, apart from receiving more fresh water. Morning muster on the 20th, and two more sailors were absent. Floyd A. Christie, seaman second class, and Guy C. Grindle, seaman second class. Lieutenant Charles F. Vent reported aboard for temporary duty at 0910. Later that night, R. E. Powell, chief electrician's mate, left the ship for three days of liberty, and the next day, both Christie and Grindle were still absent and workers from the shipyard came aboard to begin repairing the service generator and the electrical switchboard in B3. If you have been enjoying these videos, please consider subscribing and clicking that like button. It certainly helps spread awareness of the ship, allowing us to continue telling the story of destroyer escorts and their crews. And if, of course, if you're in the Albany area, please come on down and take a tour. You'll be able to see exactly where the engine room fire was and get a sense of what it would have been like to be stationed on a small tin can at sea. Until next week, take care everybody.